Join me, Buck Woody, and Marisa Matthews as we guide you through the Learning T SQL modules on Microsoft Learn. Okay, so I went off and finished the Learn modules on the select parts and actually kind of enjoyed it. But I'm working with these tables we made separately. But how do I put them together to show, let's say, sessions at an event? Yeah, okay. Remember we broke apart your spreadsheet so that the values don't duplicate? Well, how do we put them back together? Yeah. Um, earlier, I, I mentioned that set theory from school. Remember that when you made the face? Uh, mm -hmm. Sets are just these values in circles. And if the circles were far apart and didn't touch, the values had nothing in common. That's like a table. But remember, sometimes the values in one set had the same things in value with another set. And so they had this little area where they overlapped, right? We're going to use that same concept here, except with tables. I think I'm following. Okay. Uh, let's go back to our design document for just a moment. If you imagine all these boxes as those circles, you can see that there's some data in here and they don't actually touch each other in any way. So we've made these joining entities, which you can think of as another circle. And inside that circle, we put the event ID, let's say of SQL bits to the session ID of the intelligent data platform, which is one. So it's one in here, uh, excuse me, one in here and one in here. And these make that little uh, event there. Now, we're not going to do it inside a uh, spreadsheet, of course. We're going to use uh, Transact SQL to do that. And I'll explain the insert statement later, but here's all we're doing. We're putting inside that joining entity the event ID value and the session value of one for bits and one for the intelligent data platform. And now we've got those data things together. So I think I understand, but can you go into this a little bit more? Yeah, the most common operation for T-SQL to join tables together is called an inner join. This is where we want the rows from the first table, sometimes called the left table that we specify, into the values that make the next table we specify. In our case, we're gonna join three tables since we have that joining entity. So we'll just keep adding joins until we sort of get what we want. Okay, I'm gonna need you to show me the code for that. Okay, right. This might make more syntax if we just walk it down. So let's take a look here. Um, I've got the select statement and we say events.name because we're gonna come after two tables now. So events and then the dot, I want the name column from events, comma, this, the name column from sessions. First of all, we specify our left table from events and then we say, I want you to put that together with that joining entity. Remember the first one we put in there? Mm -hmm. There we go. The events events ID goes to the session to event event ID. Now we have one equals one. So we have SQL bits, but we want the sessions. So we take that table. These things have just built a little separate table and we join that where things are equal to sessions where the sessions ID, number one for intelligent data platform, is equal to that, that table that we use to join them together, which is one. So the one and the one tie to the one and the one. So let's take a look and see when that comes back. I've done a couple of these already, and you can see I've got a one and a two in my table. So I've got one for SQL bits, two, a one for intelligent data platform, one for SQL bits, and two for creating databases. So we can just add a where clause to get any value we want, just like we did in the last lesson. We can order the data, we can use tops and so on. Okay, let me think about that for a moment. And I know I'll have to practice that a little bit more, but I think I'm following here. Now, what if I want to see all the events and then if they have sessions aside, assigned already, can we see those too? Okay. Uh, to see the data from the left table, which is all our events, and any matches on the right tables or none, we can use something called an outer join. Uh, this does exactly that. You can even use it to see the ones on the right tables 
and the matches on the last one. Here's a query that shows all the events and then all the sessions, if any, at those events. So we get events that might not have any sessions. You see here in our database, we have two sessions happening at SQL Bits and nothing planned yet for Azure Data Conference. Now, let me ask you a question. If you wanna see all the sessions and any events they are at, even none, what would you type? So I think I just turn all the left operations to the right since we're building the tables here. So would it be select events.name, comma, sessions.name from events, right outer join, session to event on event dot event ID equals session to event dot event ID, right outer join, sessions on sessions dot sessions ID equals session to event dot session ID semicolon. Yes, you've got it perfectly. Let's run that and you'll see that we've got two sessions and we've got our events that those sessions uh, go to. By the way, uh, you can even use a join on the same table. Uh, this is called a self join. Our current design doesn't need this kind of join, but you can imagine a table where a value in the table has a relationship to another row in the table. Uh, for instance, let's say in our people table, we want to track whether one person is a manager of another person. We could create a table, but we actually could just create a one more column and join that value to another value in the same table. I'm gonna make something called a temporary table. This is a table that doesn't stick around just to show you what's going on. So let me show you that. Uh, I will create a table here. Let me grab it real quick. I'll grab that table here. You can see I'm just gonna create it. That little pound sign there means that I'm gonna create a temporary table. So I have a people ID, a name, a title, just like before, but I've added a man manager of value that's an integer. So I'll just run up, oh, I'll just run that now. You can see I highlighted, that's important to see, uh, mm -hmm. but you'll notice that uh, we need to enter some data and do a few other things there because that table is now, it's gone uh, because I finished using it. So I'm gonna create it again, because it's already gone, and I'm gonna run some other things on top of it. I'll enter some data. We'll enter Buck, we'll make him a data scientist, and we'll give his manager ID zero. We'll enter uh, Marisa, program manager, make her point to Buck, and we can now join them. But here's the important part of this. We can actually uh, alias, there's a couple of things going on in here. We've aliased this A by using the word as here, as A, select A.name, and then I joined it to itself again as B. So I've made a fake table. I've used the same table twice, but now I have a manager and a people ID that I can join them on. So let's run this and see what happens. You can see that Buck has no manager, but Marisa was joined to the same table where the manager's ID was one, and that's me. Notice how we're using those aliases to make it seem like there's two tables when there's really just one. Joins are so powerful. I mean, I understand the building concepts, so now I think I just need to go into those learning modules and try this out a bit more. Yeah.